Thank you. We'd like to welcome everyone to the regular city council meeting for November the 19th. Uh, council member Glover is absent and excused from this meeting. We're going to begin the meeting with an invocation offered by Pastor Jameen J. Oliver of the Jehovah Shama Apostolic Faith Church. Pastor, welcome. Followed by the Pledge of Allegiance that will be led by Scout Hudson Barsema. So if you would please uh, stand for the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mayor Giles, and to City Council, let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we are grateful for your benefits to us and for your continued benevolence to us on a daily basis. We ask, Lord, that even during this week of Thanksgiving that we would be more cognizant to be thankful for all that you do for us. Lord, we ask that you would bless every citizen, bless our council, bless our mayor, and let us be a city that exemplifies the unity and diversity in that all that you have created us to be. We're grateful for all of your benefits, and we will give your name the eternal praise. All these things we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Away, Hudson. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate that. Thank you to Hudson and thank you to uh, Pastor Oliver. We appreciate the good work you do in our community. Uh, the first item on our agenda is to take action on the consent agenda. And Mr. we'd invite Mr. Kevin Christopher to come forward to read the consent agenda. Mr. Christopher, I should note that I, we do have several cards that have been turned in for agenda item 8B. Uh, so we know that. So we will take that off of the consent agenda. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. These are the items on the consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk will be considered as a group by the City Council and will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion unless a Council Member or a citizen requests in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered as a separate item. If a citizen wants an item removed, a blue card must be completed and given to the City Clerk prior to the Council's vote on the consent agenda. Item 2, approval of minutes of previous meetings as written. Item 3A, act on liquor license application for National Comedy Theater, 214 West Main Street. Street. Item 3B, Act on Liquor License Application for Buono's Pizza, 2023 West Guadalupe Road. Item 3C, Act on Liquor License Application for Ella's Cuisine, 1941 West Guadalupe Road. Item 3D, Act on Liquor License Application for Parishes, 4425 South Mountain Road. Item 4A, Act on Bingo Application for Fountain of the Sun Homeowners Association, 560 South 80th Street. Item 5A, Act on Dollar Limit Increase to the Term Contract for Printing and Mailing of Election Publicity Pamphlets for the City Clerk's Office. Item 5B, Act on One Year Renewal of Excess Workers' Compensation Insurance and Workers' Compensation Self-Insurance Surety Bond. Item 5C, Act on Three Year Term Contract with Two Years of Renewal Options for Utility Bill Inserts for the Business Services Department. Item 5D, Act on Contract to Purchase Three Replacement and Field Broadcast Cameras and Peripherals for the Public Information and Communications Office. Item 5E, act on three-year term contract with two years of renewal options for vector services for the Parks, Recreation, and Community Facilities Department. Item 5F, act on dollar limit increase to the term contract for elevator vertical transportation unit maintenance for the Parks, Recreation, and Community Facilities Department. Item 5G, act on one-year renewal of the term contract for sprinkler and irrigation supplies for the materials and supply warehouse for the Transportation and Parks, Recreation, and Community Facilities Departments. Item 5A, check on one-year renewal with two years of renewal options to the term contract for medical transportation billing services for the Mesa Fire and Medical Department. Item 5I, act on one-year renewal to the term contract for vehicle rental services for the police department. The contract's funded by police asset forfeiture RICO funds. Item 5J, act on one-year renewal to the term contract for Econolite traffic signal controllers, video detection systems, and components for the Transportation Department. Item 5K, act on three-year term contract with two years of renewal options for traffic signal pole painting services for the Transportation Department. 
Item 5L, act on seven-month term contract with two years of renewal options for a glycerin-based carbon source for the Water Resources Department. Item 5M, act on contract to purchase nine light-duty cab chassis utility trucks, two replacements and seven additions for various city departments as requested by the Fleet Services Department. Item 5N, act on contract to purchase seven sedans, three replacements and four additions for various city departments as requested by the Fleet Services Department. Item 5O, act on three-year term contract with two years of renewal options for barricade rental services for various city departments. Item 5P, act on one-year renewal with a one-year renewal option to the term contract for fasteners, hardware, and electrical supplies for the Fleet Services Department. Item 5Q, act on one-year renewal with a one-year renewal option to the term contract for auto glass repair and replacement for the Fleet Services Department. Item 5R, act on contract for Greenfield Water Reclamation Plant bus duct replacement construction services contract for the Phase 3 expansion. This project is funded by the Greenfield Water Reclamation Plant Joint Venture Fund with contributions coming from its members based on usage. Mesa's portion is funded by 2014 authorized wastewater bonds. Item 6A, Act on Resolution regarding ZMN 18-00576. Within the 6700 block of East Albany, the 6700 block of East Akron, and the 100 block of North Power Road. Located on the west side of Power Road, north of Main Street, site plan review to allow for development of an assisted living facility. Item 6B, Act on Resolution approving and authorizing the city manager to enter into a highway safety contract with the Arizona Governor's Office of Highway Safety to accept grant funds to be used by the Police Department's Traffic Division for overtime, employee-related expenses, and equipment for selective traffic enforcement throughout the city of Mesa. Item 6C, Act on Resolution approving and authorizing the city manager to enter into a highway safety contract with the Arizona Governor's Office of Highway Safety to accept grant funds to be used by the Police Department's Traffic Division for overtime, employee-related expenses, and field test equipment to enhance DUI and impaired driving enforcement throughout the city of Mesa. Item 6D, act on resolution for staff to continue negotiations and authorizing eminent domain to acquire certain property for a necessary street improvement project. Mesa Drive Phase 2, located along Mesa Drive from 8th Avenue to Main Street and along Broadway Road from Wilbur to LaSueur. Item 7A, introduction of ordinance regarding ZON 18-00361, 244 North Extension Road, located east of Alma School Road, south of University Drive. Council use permit for social service facility to allow an inpatient substance abuse treat abuse treatment facility. Item 7B regarding introduction of ZON 18-00066 is for continuance to the February 4th, 2019 City Council meeting. Item 8A, Act on Ordinance amending Mesa City Code Section 9-6-1-C to allow for reduced roadway lighting in the pilot study areas during the streetlight pilot study period. The two areas included in the streetlight pilot study are within the Desert Uplands area and City of Mesa Electric Service area. Item 8B has been removed from the consent agenda. Item 9A, act on annexation ordinance regarding ANX 18-00471, annexing property located south of University, University Drive and east of Signal Butte Road. This was initiated for the owner. Item 9B, act on ordinance regarding ZON 18-00470, the 200 block of North Signal Butte Road and the 10,800 block of East Mercury Drive. This is located south of University Drive on the east side of Signal Butte Road. This is for a rezone and site plan review to allow for development of a single resident subdivision. Item 10A, Act on Ordinance regarding ZON 18-00510 within the 1700 and 1800 blocks of South Crisman Road, located west of Crisman Road, north of Baseline Road. Rezone, site plan modification, and special use permit. This request will allow for development of a continuum care facility. Mayor and Council members, these are the items on the consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Christopher. Ms. Mickelson, I know you've handed me several cards. You don't have any additional cards. All of the cards you handed me are with regard to item 8B, which has been taken off the consent agenda. So we do have a motion and a second for approval of the consent agenda. Please cast your vote. Uh, it is uh, unanimous with the council member and in favor of adopting the consent agenda with the council member Glover absent and excused. Uh, the next item on our agenda is uh, item 8B. This ordinance is for zoning case 18-00509. This request is for a council use permit for a social service facility located east of Country Club Drive, south of Brown Road. This item is on the agenda for a continuance to the December 10th, 2018 council meeting. Uh, Mr. Freeman, I know this is in your district. Would you like to 
begin our discussion. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I appreciate that. Um, I made some notes, and I'd just like to say it for, uh, for the record, but tonight I will support the continuance of this case. However, when it comes back uh, to Council for Action, I'll be voting to deny the applicant's request for a CUP. While I understand the property is operated as a substance abuse recovery center for several years, I believe adding a detox treatment intensifies their current use and alters the characteristic of the neighborhood from residential to a medical facility. As I understand it, a detoxification is a medical process that involves eliminating drugs or alcohol substances from the body. Because this is a more intensive type of treatment, I believe the operating characteristics of a detoxification elevates the use of the property to a medical treatment facility <coughs> similar to a clinic or a hospital, which are not allowed in RM-2 zoning district. Additionally, I think adding this use to the existing facility will have a detrimental impact on the adjacent and surrounding residential neighborhoods and it will be injurious to preserving the neighborhood feel and characteristic of this area. For these reasons, I will not be supporting the applicant's request for a council use permit. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Uh, we do have several cards that have been turned in, uh, and there are several folks who would like to express their points of view on this tonight. Uh, discussions on substance abuse treatment facilities can generate a lot of passion. Uh, as you uh, share with us your, your feelings, I ask that you be thoughtful in your comments. People recovering from substance and alcohol abuse are considered persons with disabilities that are protected under federal laws. Um, I do have a, a, a stack of cards, three of whom have indicated that they'd like to uh, come up and speak. The first is Mr. Jerry Earls. Welcome, Mr. Earls. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Mayor, Mayor Giles, Mark Freeman. Um, my name is Jerry Earls. I live at 51 West 9th Street, which is three doors down from this facility. And uh, basically, I wrote a few notes. I wouldn't try to wouldn't mess it up too bad. I'm not exactly a great public speaker. But uh, anyway, um, we really don't want to have a detoxification facility in our residential neighborhood. Uh, I went to the PNZ meeting about this, and they kept talking about grandfathered rights. and. It's never been a detox, so this is not grandfathered in. So there is no grandfather clause here for you guys to consider. Uh, the facility itself was built in 1996 as a senior assisted housing. It was purchased in 2001. They changed it to women in new recovery. They had no input at all to the neighborhood. We didn't even know what happened until later on down the road. There was not any major incidents, but quite a few minor incidents in the neighborhood because of the women there. Um, then in uh, 2017, again, when Canyon News purchased it, they switched it again to a full-blown drug and alcohol rehabilitation facility. And um, again, with no input into the neighborhood, we're only now involved because they're requesting this permit from the city council. Otherwise, we would still not even realize what they're doing. We just find out by issues in the neighborhood. Uh, I've been living in the neighborhood for over 20 years. Quite a few of my neighbors have been there for over 30 years. And um, everybody is really concerned about this. They're, they're, a lot of people are actually frightened by it. And um, historically, as uh, Mr. Freeman stated, it brings values of homes down and crime up. Those are facts that, that uh, are really indisputable. It doesn't happen in every single neighborhood, and we don't know if it will in ours, but it very well may happen. And then um, my wife and I took it upon ourselves to start a neighborhood petition because we feel that strongly about this. And currently we have over 50 plus signatures and it's growing by the day. <clears throat> and um, I've had absolutely zero resistance to this from the neighborhood. We do not want this in our facility. Um, there's been what I would call a lot of sugar coating in the application. I read the application cover to cover. I've listened, to, I've been to every single meeting. I've listened to all this. And um, Basically, they're change, trying to change it to social services, and I understand a need for that, but not necessarily in a residential neighborhood. But this is a full-blown alcoholic and drug rehabilitation facility in a residential neighborhood. It's residential on all four sides. And I would implore you to consider the wishes of the people who live here today, tomorrow, and the day after. We're still gonna be here, whether you approve this or disapprove it, but we'd like to have it stopped. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Earls. Uh, next, we'll hear from William Gosney. <clears throat> Mayor and Council, Mr. Freeman, my name is William Gosney. We live at 656 North McDonald Drive, which is about 
three, four blocks south of the proposed uh, change in use. And I guess our greatest concern is, number one, I want to say it's at Center and 8th Street, there is a crosswalk where all of the children walk every morning to go to the school off to the east. And our greatest concern has to basically do with security. Um, there is no real security proposed for this facility. And our understanding is that people are free to come and go as they would please. And so our concern really most significantly has to do with children walking in the neighborhood. And at that point, I have other concerns, but that's enough for tonight. <laughs> Thank okay. you, Mr. Gunn. Thank you. Uh, third person I have is Susan Lee. I just had a procedure on my nose, so pardon my appearance. <laughs> but um, but I, I fully support Jerry. He's my neighbor. I live at 105 West Knight Street. And I can't really add to his comments or all the research that he's done, and I really thank him for that. But I have taken my nest egg and bought a home in this neighborhood. <laughs> and I just, <laughs> it terrifies me. <laughs> you know, I come home late at night. I'm a flight attendant. I chose this neighborhood because of Jerry. And the people across the street have been married for 60 years. It was just this little pocket of this beautiful neighborhood. I had no idea that this could happen. So for me, it would mean I would have probably have to move or you know, lose the value in my home. And that's not how I wanted moving to Arizona to be. Okay, thank, thank you, you. Susan. Uh, I'll note that I have several other cards. They've all each have, have indicated opposition, but uh, if that was for, just for the record, Mr. Ed Groot, Diana Groot, uh, Chris Tipsraney, Nancy Cohen, uh, D. Montague, and Susie Earls. It's correct uh, that, so your opposition has been noted, and thank you for being here tonight. Uh, is there any other request to speak or any other council comments on this item? If not, is there a motion to continue this to the December 10th meeting? Thank you, Mr. Freeman's made the motion, seconded by Mr. Luna. Please cast your vote. Uh, the vote is unanimous with Mr. Glover absent to continue this item to the December 10th council meeting. Um, Ms. Mickelson, have we received any other requests to speak under items from citizens present? All right, that being the case, Council, is there a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. 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 We are adjourned.